Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I am happy to sew along with you the Captivating Clutch by Mrs. H. This is the small size. There are two sizes. Um, the other one is quite a bit bigger, so it could be more. It's a clutch as well, but a larger clutch, but could definitely be made into a purse. I chose to make this one into a wristlet. There are instructions also in the pattern as to how to add in um, the D-rings, which I actually did on one side here for um, a crossbody strap if you wanted. Let me show you some of the amazing features of this bag. So it's super cute. Um, it's got this decorative double flap. Underneath this flap, you have a main compartment. Well, a large compartment anyways. And then underneath this flap is where all of the fun and the party begins. Um, we have on one side a zipper pocket and then a large compartment here, a central dividing zipper pocket, another large compartment, two slip pockets, and then a another pocket here. So there is so many pockets in this bag. It is amazing. Um, yeah. So it's got gusset closure or gusset on the sides. Um, I made mine in vinyl, I will not lie. If you are on a domestic machine, I strongly recommend you choose your fabrics wisely. This pattern was written for domestic machines, but right in here we sew our gussets in and it does get quite thick there. Um, I don't think with vinyl I would have been able to do it on my domestic machine but on my industrial it wasn't a problem again the pattern is written for cottons and that kind of thing but yeah I did mine in vinyls um guts of the bag interfacing all my cotton pieces are uh, backed with EB fuse light which is like an SF101 or a medium woven interfacing. There is foam as a main stabilizer in here. I use the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs, which is equivalent to say a Pelon Flex Foam or uh, by any soft and stable. There is fleece in the flaps of this, just a small piece of fusible fleece. Um, what else, what else, what else? I think that is it for the interfacing. All of my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My zippers and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. This gorgeous Chanel um, inspired um, vinyl is from uh, Fantastic Customs Vinyls up here in Canada. My pink here, this is the cotton candy pink from Galaxy Customs in her Canuck line. My <laughs> lining. I don't know. It was in my scrap bin. I cut the salvages off a long time ago, so I don't know what it is, but I'm sure I bought it from Fabricland. What else? What else? I really think that is all there is. It's minimal hardware in this. It actually comes together quite quickly. I quite enjoyed making this one. It's super cute. I think it's going to sell really well on my market tables. Oh, and another exciting thing. Um... If you're watching this between September 14th, I'm reading my dates here, um, between September 14th and 19th of 2022, this is part of a big bag, big bag bundle, say that 20 times fast, on the So uh, Modern Bags website. I have that link down below. Um, it's a bundle of 20 patterns, regular value at $190. US on sale for $23.95 US. Um, there are some amazing bags in there. There's 20 different patterns in there. So really, if you look at it, you're looking at like $1.25 a pattern or something like that. Like there's great ones. Many of the uh, patterns in there, I actually have tutorials for. So that's an added bonus as well. So again, if you're watching it between September 14th and 19th of 2022, definitely uh, follow the link down below to, um, get a really good deal on 20 amazing patterns, which also include this. And if it's after that date, I've also included the link down below to Mrs. H website where you can definitely go ahead and buy this pattern as well. Anyways, oh, another thing I wanted to mention about this bag that I think would be really cool is if you left these flaps off, this would be an amazing drop-in bag organizer um, for your current purse. It would just fit in there really good in the main compartment and then you have all these extra pockets and everything. So that is an added thing and it would be so easy to leave off these flaps for sure. Um, I think that is another way I would use this pattern. 
Absolutely. Anyways, how about we get to making this bag? All right, so you're gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape. If you're doing a wristlet like me, a D-ring and a swivel clasp, you only need two pulls. I do not know why I pulled out three. Two magnetic snaps. For cutting pieces, your wristlet or strap piece you wanna put on. I'm gonna be doing a zipper facing for my inner zipper pocket. Uh, my back pocket panels, two of those. My front panels in my exterior and my lining. My two zipper tabs and my uh, connector piece. My back panels, exterior and lining. My A1 top flap, exterior and lining. My gussets or wings, two in exterior, two in lining. Zipper pocket lining pieces. My under flap, exterior and lining. My zipper divider, two exterior, two lining. And some sew foam. All right, so we're going to start with our under flaps. You're gonna take one of your um, back pocket panels here. I have, while well, I'm working with both of them, you're gonna take our two flaps, the lining and the exterior flaps, put them right sides together with those panels and stitch across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on both. So what we're working on here is that inner flap, which was my pink flap. Once that is done, you want to go ahead and press that seam open, which I have done here. Now I'm going to take my um, zipper facing. Again, I'm doing this slightly different than the pattern. It is my preferred method of how to do a zipper pocket when I'm not using an overlay. So I am just drawing onto uh, the piece. I think I cut this like two and a half inches by, I don't remember, eight inches or so. And I'm just drawing on my zipper box like we do whenever we make zippers in the center of it. This doesn't have to be exact. Is just a guide for sewing so I'm drawing this on the wrong side of my zipper facing and then I'm going to take my lining piece that has the lining flap on it I'm going to find my center of the top rounded side and I am going to measure down from that flap as per what the pattern suggests and place my facing there make sure it is centered these are right sides together and I'm going to sew around that rectangular box. This is similar to what she does in the pattern, except for she uses the zipper lining um, pieces to do this. I just prefer this way of doing it myself. There is no wrong way of doing it. Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start cutting out on my lines in between those quarter inch marks before our V's. I'm just taking my rotary cutter in and then going in with my scissors. I'm going to cut into those V's as close as I possibly can to the stitching without cutting the stitching. And then we're going to go ahead and push that through the hole and bring these pieces wrong sides together. It really helps to take this to the iron and give it a good press. Okay, so that is done, and this is what we have here. And I'm just going to take some zipper tape, or not zipper tape, a double-sided tape, and put it along the back of the facing, making sure, if you're on a domestic, that you're keeping it out of where our top stitch line is. So I've left more than an eighth of an inch clear along um, that opening. To prepare our zipper, again, I'm using double-sided tape. If your machine doesn't like it, please do use clips. On the lining pieces along one of each of the long sides of each, I'm putting my tape on. My first piece is a right side up and my zipper is zipper tape is right side up and I'm just going to stick it on and go ahead and sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that side is done, I'm going to take the other lining piece 
and I'm going to put it right sides together with this along that other um, side of the zipper tape that has not been sewn. Again, our zipper tape is right side up and that lining piece is right side up. So across there and then go ahead and give that a good press. Okay, so now that that's done, make sure your pole is facing or closing to the left. Take off your tape off of the top of that rectangle um, on the lining piece and center your zipper in that box along that top. Secure the top when you like how it's placed. Once that's placed well, go ahead and do the same with the bottom. Once that's placed all good, you're going to go ahead and you are going to top stitch all the way around this rectangle, securing that zipper in place, making sure your lining pieces are butterflied out away from each other on the opposite side. Just like so. Make sure your needle's down if you need to move your zipper pull out of the way. Now that that's done, make sure your zipper does open and close. Now we're going to pull the lining pieces right sides together, trim them up so they are the same um, length. And we are going to sew so shut, sew so shut, that's hard to say, the three unsewn sides of the zipper pocket. Now what we're going to want to do is make sure we fold the main part out of the way and so we're only sewing through the zipper pocket piece down here, across the bottom and up the other side. I like to sew nice and close to where the stitching was um, just to give a little extra security to that zipper and then use that as my seam allowance all the way around. Once that is done, you can go ahead and trim up your seam allowances and cut away any extra zipper facing or what have you to reduce the bulk in behind. Okay, so now what we want to do is our placement of our magnetic snaps. On this aligning side, we're going to install our male magnetic snap centered one inch down. Make your mark there. Go ahead and install that backed with a piece of Decaville Heavy or Peltex scrap and then put a piece of fleece or duct tape over top of the prongs for added security. On the external piece, we're going to measure down, I believe it was one and three quarters of an inch. Double check your pattern uh, for that placement and install in the same manner your female snap there. Now, they will not match, that's okay. These aren't gonna be clicking into each other. Um, you'll see what they do later. After that's done, put these right sides together and clip all the way around. Match up the seams where our flaps are. Now one thing we're going to do is on one of the long sides we're going to leave a opening for turning right here so we will not sew in between those marks but you're going to go ahead and sew all the way around the rest of it with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, so now once that is done, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna fold up the seam here where of the unsewn part and give that a good press. And what that's gonna do is just give us a really nice folded in edge for when we go to seal this up later. Once that is done, uh, go ahead and trim up your corners as close as you possibly can to those corners without um, cutting uh, the stitching. This will help us get a nice pointy edge there. And then take your pinking shares or do, do small notches all the way around the curve of the snap or of the flap. And once that's done, go ahead and turn this right side through. Super easy to turn. Make sure you press out all of your uh, seams, especially around this rounded edge. I can't find my pokey tool here. Um, it was hiding on me at this point. So I'm just going to go in and use the edge of a pen cap to help myself um, poke through those edges. Chopstick works really well as well. Go ahead and give that a good press from the lining side. Now we are just going to top stitch the flap and down the short edge of the lining. We are not going to be top stitching the rest of it just yet and we are not going to be closing up that turning hole just yet. You just want to top stitch that bottom straight edge and around the flap. Now I'm starting my top stitch kind of where the seam and the lining piece meet and working my way around. Make sure your bobbin thread looks really good as well because this stitching will be seen on both sides of the bag. Okay, so that is the inner flap done. We have everything done. You can set this aside for now. Okay, so now we are gonna work on our wings or our gussets. We're gonna take our exteriors and our lining pieces, put them right sides together, clipping all but the bottom short side. Go around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for both. And you'll see me in this, I chain stitch a lot for this pattern and all that is is saving on thread and cutting thread as I do not have a thread cutter on my industrial machine. So though it may look like I'm sewing these together, I'm not, they are actually not touching. I just am carrying my thread over to the second piece. And I will cut them apart later. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and snip our corners again so we can have some nice pointy edges here, reducing that bulk. And then you can go ahead and turn these right sides through. Once again, poking out all of your seams and all of your corners nice and crisp and sharp. Once you have this all pushed out, you can give this a good press from the lining side. Um, I'm using the lining side because if I do it on my vinyl, of course I'll melt it. <laughs> and now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch just along that top longer straight edge, leaving the bottom open still. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my D-ring again in the pattern where it shows to do the D-rings for the strap. We, they use one inch hardware. I'm just using half inch hardware here because I want a smaller wristlet, but uh, you do it exactly the same way, but you would make two of these. So you've drawn a line down the center of your connector, folding the long edges into the center and top stitching down each side. Once that is done, you're going to go ahead and just put a small piece of... Um, tape on the bottom, put your D ring on and D ring on and fold these wrong sides together. 
holding that in place. Now I'm going to take my uh, lining uh, main panel here and I'm going to put my D-ring facing down about an inch or so in. If you were doing a crossbody strap, you would do the same on the opposite side. That's all basted in place now. And now I'm going to take my, uh, uh, my outside flat piece, find its centers. So this is the flap that is sitting on top. And we're going to put this uh, right sides together, nice and centered. I said I always forget to do my centers right off the hop, but here we go. Okay, and clip it across and we will go ahead and sew this on. Exactly like we did with the inner flaps. You'll do the same for the exterior back and flap as well. All of our seam allowances in this pattern are 3 8 of an inch unless otherwise specified. Okay, so I have my seams pressed open on both. And now for the one with our tab, we are just going to go ahead and top stitch just through the bottom lining side there just to secure that uh, connector a little bit more. And it also keeps the connector pointing the right direction and not flopping all over the place. You want the connector to stay facing upwards. Okay, so now we're going to take our uh, main piece. Now you want to, if you're using directional fabric like me, you want to make sure you have this main front piece uh, orientated properly so it'll look like it's going the opposite direction. Clip along the bottom. You'll do the same with the lining piece. Make sure if you're using directional fabric that you have it orientated properly. And we're going to go across this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can see I have my fabrics all right. My lining side, my flap I have going the same direction, mainly because when it's open, you're going to be able to see the flap. Now we're going to take that exterior piece and we are going to put it on top of our sew foam and use this piece as our template for cutting our sew foam out. You are going to then go ahead and base that on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This allows us to cut away some of this bulk away from that seam, nice and close to that stitching. Uh, trust me, you will want to do this for final construction as the seams do get a little thick. So cut away a scant quarter of an inch of that interfacing. Now we're going to install our um, magnetic snap. I put in my nameplate. I learned the hardware way. Uh, make sure you put your nameplate at a quarter, one and a quarter inch or more in from the sides. Um, I did it one inch and I would have ended up sewing through my... Um, my nameplate which would have been bad news. Uh, you're going to measure up and put your female connector on the main panel of the exterior and then on the flaps we are repeating exactly what we did before with on um, the lining flap an inch in. So I have my female snap down on the bottom. On the lining side I have my male snap. All right, so now uh, what we want to do is we are going to sew on our gusset pieces. So use your pattern piece uh, to for the measurement here, depending whether you're making the large size or the small size of this. Measure up, make a mark, and then you're going to take your gusset pieces, that unsewn side, and at that mark, you're going to put these right sides together and clip in place. Again, all the sizes are different depending on which size of the clutch you are making. So please do refer to the pattern for your measurements. Do the same with the other side. And then go ahead and base these in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done. Now we can take the lining. We're going to put these right sides together just like we did with the other flat piece. The only difference is we are going to leave the opening for turning in the bottom straight edge. 
not the side edge like we did with the inner flap. Okay, so that is all sewn. I've turned in my edges already like so, and I'm going to clip them in place. And then we are going to top stitch this shut with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You're also going to go ahead and top stitch around the flap just like we did with the lining piece or this uh, the inner flap piece. Make sure it is closed. And then once again, I started kind of where the seam of the, the flap meets the main body and top stitch just around the curve of the flap. Okay, so now we're going to work on our uh, divider pocket. I'm doing my tabs a little different. I like to use raw edges and my vinyl here, so I'm putting my tabs right sides together on either end of my zipper tape, and I'm sewing these in place with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, only use this method if you are using a non-fraying fabric. Once you have that done, we're going to kind of fold this up and use that seam of the zipper tape to fold it right sides together like so and top stitch that in place. So the zipper tape is kind of um, acting as our template for where we're folding this over and top stitch across there, repeat with the other side. Now you'll see that leaves the back long so you can go ahead and trim that up. This side is left raw where the top side is not raw. Trim your tabs up to the same width as your tape. And now I'm measuring in, um, making sure I'm just about three eighths of an inch or so in from the sides of my lining pieces. My lining piece is right side up. Again, if your machine does not like double-sided tape, make sure you use clips here. I have my ex one of my exterior pieces of my divider pocket and I'm putting tape along the top of that as well. And I'm going to take my lining piece right side up and my zipper right side up and place this in between those marks that I made. You do want these tabs to be outside of the seam allowance because we do not want to be sewing through these when we go to put this pouch together. Once that is done, you're going to go ahead and take your exterior piece and put it right sides together. Nice and centered. You will see the exterior piece is slightly bigger. That is what we want and you'll see why um, when we go to taper this in later. So go ahead and sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to take these pieces, I've already done it, and press them wrong sides together like so, and we're going to top stitch through both the exterior and the lining to secure that seam. You'll do the exact same thing with the other lining piece and the other exterior piece for the opposite side of the zipper. Okay, now that that's done, this goes together just like a pouch. Make sure your zipper tabs are kind of poking or bending towards the lining side. I like to match up my side seams first. Again, they are going to look like the lining pieces are shorter than the other. That's because they are, and I'll show you what we're going to do here momentarily. So we are going to leave the lining bottom open uh, for turning. 
And what I like to do is I like to fold up about a half inch or so of both of those layers like this. Um, and what that does is we will sew through those, leaving this bottom open, but it's going to give us a nice fold when we go uh, to turn this out for when we need to sew the opening shut. Go ahead and clip all the way around. Now we're going to go up here uh, with our quarter of an inch and then we're going to kind of taper out like so and then continue with a quarter of an inch. And then when you get back here, you're going to kind of go on a diagonal back in. It helps to mark that, leaving the bottom open. Now, I truly wish that I had changed into my zipper foot at this point because to get nice and close to that uh, zipper tab without going through was a little bit hard with my standard foot on because it kept getting stuck on it. Whereas a zipper foot, I would have just breezed right on through right next to it. So I strongly recommend putting your zipper foot on for this. mainly just for going beside that tab. So again, coming back up and you're going to kind of taper it inwards towards the lining, still making sure that your seams are matched up. So you'll see me kind of turn it in. So then I can continue with my quarter of an inch down, making sure you are not going through that zipper tab. You can see I kind of got hung up here. If I had my zipper fit on, I wouldn't have got hung up. Okay, so you can see here where we sewed that, it kind of makes a nice thing. I have that turned out. I've cut my corners. Go ahead and turn this right side out. Poke out those zipper tabs. You can see they look like perfection because we did not sew through them. I found my pokey tool, yay! So go ahead and poke out all of your corners. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and sew the folded in edges of our bottom lining piece here with an eighth of an inch top stitch. And that's done. Go ahead and stuff the lining inside and give this a good press. Okay, so you can kind of see how the top tapers in. That is what we want. On the bottom of this, I went ahead and I did a top stitch already on the bottom folded edge opposite the zipper. Okay, so now we are going to measure up on this lining piece that has the zipper pocket on it, a half inch from the bottom. And we are going to place our zipper po make, pocket, making sure our zipper pulls are going the same direction along that line. Make sure it's nice and centered. And I'm going to pin this in place. Now what we want to do is we want to find, you can see how it tapers right here. That is exactly what we wanted. We succeeded. Now we're going to find the center mark of the bottom here and measure up as per the pattern piece from that center mark, depending which size you are making and draw a line. I believe mine was six and an eighth. I can't remember exactly, but it's all in the pattern there but draw that center line up. This is creating those two slip pockets. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to top stitch up that line. So I'm just starting where the pocket begins. So up that line. And you could backstitch when you're done there, but I want to add a little extra security to that. So I'm going to pivot it around and go back down that line just to give it a little extra stitch length as these pockets will be used. Do not want those stitches popping at all. Okay, so that's done. Now what we want to do is take this in inside of zipper pouch and you kind of want to fold it up and out of the way because we are going to be doing some sewing work around the edges here and we do not want it to get caught in there. Okay, so we're going to take our exterior piece. We're going to put the lining inner pocket piece um, nice and centered on top. Make sure it is centered from side to side. You'll see the inner flap is narrower than our exterior flap, which is what we want. Clip that in place. Then we want to make sure this is still really nice and centered. Um, if you're using all cotton, you can definitely pin this because I'm using vinyl. I'm going to just use my really, really, really big um, quilting clips here. 
Um, for that opening in the side, I'm just going to add a little double-sided tape in there just to make sure that it all gets caught because we will be closing that up here momentarily with this next step. So you don't have to use uh, double-sided tape here. I'm just using it just to make sure that my fold, my opening is nice and even for top stitching. Clipper pin this in place. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch all along that inner panel, but not this bottom part because we don't want to close up that slip pock all the way up. Again, we're going to be doing this with the main panel down, so please make sure your bobbin thread is really good as it is what is going to be seen as our exterior on our exterior of our bag. So starting at one long edge, we're just sewing up and down each of the long edges of that inner flap. For me on this one, I think it worked out to being about a half inch from the external edge of the exterior. Just make sure you're keeping this line nice and straight because you want to have a straight top stitch on the right side of the bag. So that's one side done. Hop on over and do the other side. Okay, so you can see we still have a long pocket here. We want to make sure that opening is still there. Top stitching looks good. Now go ahead and lay that um, divider pocket nice and flat and hold it in place with clips or pins, depending what you're using. And now what we're going to do is we are going to sew up the front main panel just in like a U shape, not along that bottom top stitch side, but down the other sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And what you will see this will do is it's going to hold that pocket in place, creating another slip pocket here. So what I'm doing is right at that seam where we attach this uh, front panel onto that main panel, I am stitching in the ditch all the way across. This is closing up the two sections as well. So our pocket doesn't go all the way from top to bottom. It now gives us two main sections of the bag. Okay, so that's done. You can see we have a section that ends here and then this one, we now have a bottom to it as well. And now we are gonna work on these gussets. So you wanna fold the gussets in half like so. If you're using cotton, go ahead and give it a good press. I'm using vinyl, so I'm just finger pressing it here. But you wanna make sure they're definitely in half. And then what we're going to do is take that interior zipper pocket and we are going to place it right into that fold. Now you can go ahead and sew this. I always have problems myself uh, getting nice and straight in there. So I am going to instead rivet these in place. The pattern does give you instructions how to do both. I have chose the riveting. Make sure your gussets are right to the top of that zipper pocket like so. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put two rivets in each side, nice and close to the fold. You want to make sure you go through all the layers of the zipper pocket as well as the gusset front and back so it stays in place. I am using large rivets to do this with a little extra length on my post, making sure I'm going through all the layers. So one right about there, I'm just eyeballing where I'm putting it. And then another one about an inch or so down, making sure you're catching all the layers. 
Once you've done that, go ahead and set those and do the exact same thing with the other side of the gusset, or the other gusset. So that's done. Now what we want to do is bring our bag up like so and clip our gusset in place to that back piece like so. And we are going to start where our top stitching of the flap ended and all the way down with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is where it gets really thick. Um, and this is where you may want to make sure you are making the correct fabric choices for what your machine can handle. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead on the other side on the front piece and do the exact same thing with the other side of the gusset. And top stitch that together as well. repeat the exact same thing with the other side. Once you have that all done, attach your wristlet, admire your work, make sure everything looks good. I just love how this one came together. It is so incredibly adorable all of the pockets, snaps all match up. We look good. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. What'd you think about that? Such an incredibly unique construction for this small yet mighty clutch. I really, really enjoyed making it. Again, if you're watching this between September 14th and September 19th, make sure you click on, of 2022, make sure you click on that link below to um, purchase the Big Bag Bundle, which is on sale from $190 US down to $23.95 US and gets you 20 amazing patterns um, from amazing designers. Um, again, many of those when I went through the list, I have tutorials for as well. So make sure you, you go and check it out. And if it's after those dates, the link down below how to uh, buy this pattern is there as well. Anyways, if you did like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up goes a long way for me. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That is down below in the description. And be sure to check out on my front page. Um, I have a link down below as well to my Soul Along classes on the membership side, if that is something you'd be interested in as well. Anyways, until the next one. Bye.